know about Georgia? Well, I know that it's not in the USA. <laughs> or the USSR. We're going to the other Georgia. So we've got a nighttime flight, but I've got so many deadlines. It's 2.30 in the morning and it's been a really long flight, but we're here. Oh man. We were in transit for 32 hours. Sleep's not to be had. It's funny, I came here knowing nothing about Georgia. Although its history speaks of warfare and conflict, the country prides itself on its hospitality. It seems like a bizarre contradiction, but time will tell Stand back. as we fight to find our story <laughs> here in Georgia. Travel riders cover different beats. I tackle the quirky, cultural side of travel. I find edgy, risk-taking stories. The trick is to find stories that inspire. And the stories that sell. It's all happening in Tbilisi. I like to do this when I come to a new country, you know? like. Go to the highest point, have a look, get a nice little survey of what the place looks like. Feels like the rest of Eastern Europe, but it there's does. no That's tourists. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're getting like a hidden gem, you know? A place where people don't normally go. But these bathhouses look amazing. That one's really, yeah, it's really beautiful. cool. The Georgian history has it that. Uh, the waters here are great for your health. You can smell I sulfur. I can smell the sulfur, I know. A sulfur bath. Hello. Now, you know it's customary for men and women to share separate quarters, right? So I'll just see you when you come out. Ooh, it smells, whoa. These waters are known for their healing properties. Sorry guys, this is for girls only, but I'll let you know how it is on the inside. Georgians are actually known for living a very long time, and some people say it's because of all the bathing they do in the sulfur waters. I have to say, I do have some jet lag. Long travel getting here. My god, I was on a plane forever. Jet lag? Be gone. Now one of the cool things that you can get done here is you can actually have a masseuse come in and scrub your body. But I'm wise to this. I've had a Turkish massage and they call it a massage, but really it's just scraping your skin off. I don't know if Robin's aware of this, but he is going to get a beating. <laughs> That's gotta be good for me. Man, is it hot. <clears throat> and the sulfur, the smell is kind of getting to me. Okay, that burns when he was exfoliating me roughly. The water is burning. Mm. I think I've had enough. My hand is shaking because this guy just rubbed me down with this really coarse sponge that took about seven layers of my skin off. And then he poured the sulfuric water, this boiling water over me that burnt and stung. This is intense. And somehow, at the end, it all feels strangely pleasant. Look, my, my hand is shaking. Look at this. Oh, my arm, my hand. It's like crazy. It's like everything's traditional and ancient and I wanted something more contemporary. So I went to MySpace, Facebook, I mean I poked around all over the place and found um, this one guy. And he's tapped into this subculture in Tbilisi. I mean when you meet someone online, yeah, I like to know. be a little bit safer so it's nice that you're here with me <laughs> just in case. So I don't know, I mean luckily it's not too busy here, this is a good meeting spot. Okay, this, this could be down. 
Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? It's Jiwi. Robin. Who's Gibi? Gibi. Hi, Gibi Julia. Hi. Nice to meet you in person. Lazy. Lazy? He's Revas Lazy. from Heracles. Ah, I've heard about you. Hi, yeah, nice sure. to meet you. We it's talked good. in an email. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's good to meet you guys in person. We got in at like 4 o'clock in the morning and I've had no sleep. <laughs> Tell me what's going to happen yes. tonight. Tonight we have a concert, a show, Georgian metal music. This music was forbidden in Soviet times, but even now we are rebels. People think that we are crazy freaks or Satanists. It's a stereotype about people who listen to this kind of music. Not in the civilized Western countries, I believe, but here, this guy from concert hall, when he heard that we are organizing the metal concert, he refused to rent it. Really? It can be risky meeting a stranger off the internet, but this gamble has paid off big. An underground scene in an underexposed country? Perfect for my column. With an almost non-existent music industry, Georgian Metal finds a home at intimate indie events like these. Thanks for coming with me. This should be it right here, it's called Deja Vu. Okay, there he is right here. Hey, what's going on? The lights off. The lights are off, what do you mean? Off. Yes, uh, maybe it's a problem inside of the building. This is my very first introduction to the heavy metal scene in Georgia and there's no light. With the concert shut down, Gibby takes me to the band's jam space where I can hang out with the musicians. Hang out? Have yes. Yes. It's quite the rehearsal space. We're in like a we're in like a dungeon. <laughs> yes, it reflects the uh, you know the style of music that is played and written and loved. <laughs> this is our okay. home. It's a gather place for a lot of Georgian musicians and you know, a lot of concerts are playing in this place. We're drinking. We're having fun. Georgians are very hostile. This is Mancha. She looks petite and nice, and she can growl like nobody's business. enough to meet these guys online. I was brought in under their wing. They showed me an awesome time and I'm just getting a sense of who they are and why this music is so important to them. I found you through MySpace. If you didn't have a profile on there, I probably would not be doing this story right yes. now. Internet is a great thing. <laughs> Julia has the luxury in her column of being able to write whatever she likes. I can't. I have to sell a concept to an editor. You know, when I was looking around for something to do here in Georgia, I was fascinated to find out that there's a martial arts in Europe, and it's from Georgia, and it dates back thousands of years ago. This is the head of the union. Lasha Kobakiski and Archil Grok Helashvili Members of the Union of Georgian Martial Arts waste no time in preparing me for battle. This uniform uh, counts about two centuries. This is 200 years old? Yeah. It's itchy. <laughs> okay. These shoes are about uh, three weeks old. <laughs> this is uh, called Kebdal. 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 So this is traditional weapon, so no, ha no hands. No hands. Another kind of wrist. This is wrist. Okay. I can tell you that within seconds, just about every muscle and ligament in my, in my wrist has been twanged and pulled. Dummies. In the traditional fights, it would generally result in a broken wrist or broken fingers, that kind of thing. So they've stopped that, fortunately. Now come the first. Watch this. This is warmer, mind you. This is warmer. Okay? A 
Okay, this is the boxing part and it actually wants me to, to connect. Really? Oh, my sucker's dark. Punch him, give him a good punch. <laughs> give him a good punch. I will try to die in the in the room. You are too nervous. I'm 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 well, we're going to go outdoors now to the uh, to the old fort, rain or shine. What's that doing there? Hi. How are you doing? Julia drank too much last night. I did not. I have a cold. Because she drank too much last night. <laughs> it's not true. And she got in at four o'clock in the morning. That's true. Where did you disappear to last night? You should have stayed for the whole thing. It was fun. I had to get up early this morning. The sleeping beauty. What is this martial arts called? Uh, it's called uh, Gridoli. It's basically been buried for hundreds of years, and now these guys bringing it back. Do I get to see you getting your ass kicked? If you're lucky. <laughs> then I might enjoy it after all. So this morning I was in a, in a gym, and this is a much cooler setting, a first century fort. We learned about uh, a boxing and, and wrestling, and now I'm going to learn about the weapons. So these are the swords they practice with. As you can see, they're sharp, they're jagged. And basically, it's tetanus on a stick. I've yet to see him fight, but um, I'm sure it'll be pretty funny. Hit and back in the position. Hit back in the position. This is a skill that takes years to perfect. So I'm enjoying watching him be goofy, wielding his sword. Just trusting that it's going to hit that shield and not my face. There's a lot of trust going on here. In this kind of position, it's quite difficult to move. I see. Next thing is with two swords. This is actually really amazing. I've never seen this before. Rob's got a good story here. There's almost an eye. Wow, that's amazing. You want to try that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to try that. <laughs> There's a guy behind me wielding an axe. For the first time I'm sitting over here thinking, am I safe? So the axe is the biggest weapon to be it's held by... Axe. This is called Dabari. Dabari? Yeah, Dabari. Can I try? Yeah, of course. Okay. Be careful with your knees. Oh my god, now Robin's got the axe. Now I'm seriously in trouble. <laughs> I'm like cringing in the corner. Right now what you have is a petrified cameraman. <laughs> petrified everybody else too, I think. Oh god. I suggest you stand back, my friend, because... Just turn around. Hold on tight! Hold on tight. Follow, follow. Yeah, like that. Oh no. I'm hoping I don't let go because I'll probably be responsible for taking someone's head off. That's cool. If I had to let go of anything, it's coming straight at you. You know, know. You know that. I know. Travel writer kills other travel writer <laughs> in freak medieval weapon accident. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> Problem, it's starting to rain. Oh my god, and when it rains here, it really rains. I gotta go. <laughs> so many cool weapons, you know, and such a variety of weapons. That was me. In fact, that nobody outside of Georgia knows that there's a martial arts that goes back a thousand years. The fact that it's been reborn in this day and age um, makes it just a terrific story. The late afternoon sun is breaking through the storm clouds behind me. Demonstration fights on the old fort walls appear straight out of a movie. 
the swords clash while the entire city is spread out beneath them. There are karate and kung fu schools all over the world. One day there could be Georgian martial arts schools too. We're leaving Tbilisi and we're on our way to, uh, into the countryside. Well, we're reaching the area, obviously, where there's uh, wineries. As far as the eye can see, grapes. There's a castle. It's around above vineyards. Camera time! The best part about a road trip is just being able to stop and get out and take a few photos. That's what traveling's all about. The cool thing is that our guide said, there's nothing really special about this. It's just a castle, you know? <laughs> we find it pretty special. We've been traveling together for about, you know, 26 countries or something. You can't take Julia anywhere because she has a habit to find cute Swiss boys on bicycles, even in remote castles in Georgia. It's unbelievable. Bye. Rising doesn't always have to be about a specific thing. It can just be about your experience in a place. What are you selling, ladies? Hi, man. What a character. That was great. Look at that guy. Thank you. <laughs> A man just gave me a gigantic cucumber. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. That's all I need. I love Georgia. The Signagi region is quite famous for its wine. It's the birthplace of wine. There's been a remarkable transition from uh, the last place we were at. Dusty, traditional Eastern European. And look at this. It's got that tourist kind of vibe. I think it's the first yeah. souvenirs we've seen. Looks like they're actually developing the tourism industry, putting the money into this region. It's beautiful. How many people have come into Georgia specifically to look at wine? I'm not, you know, if somebody else has written a story about Georgian wine, it doesn't mean that I can't write a story about Georgian wine. Yeah, I mean, ideally we want to cover stories that no one else has done, but Robin's right. So we haven't written about it. No, we don't always seek out stories that haven't been told. We seek out stories that haven't been told by us. Our guide, Nick, takes us to a typical household which produces wine using traditional methods. Okay, so this is the wine cellar of the, yeah, we're in a local like a, home. So the wine is actually under, is in barrels or? Yeah, no, it's fermented here. It's for, it's to grapes go, the grapes go right in here. There's 200 endemic species here in Georgia alone. So we're talking about grapes that the world just doesn't know about. Gaumajos. Very young. Yeah. <laughs> so in addition to wine, toasting is also a big part of Georgian culture. Yeah. So we're going to learn the art of Georgian toasting later so tonight later for dinner? Tonight, yeah. I think they're going to make us drink a lot of wine. It's customary. <laughs> I know, I'm a bit nervous. It's part of the uh, hospitality. Come to God. To God. Oh. And to meet new people, new friends. But mainly in most of the Georgia, the first toast is always to God. Amen. We have to remember those people who passed away and who are not uh, with us today. I have to say, I, li I like this wine better than earlier on today. Yeah. 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 I've always wanted a job I could get paid to drink. <laughs> and here you go. You should become a Toastmaster. So we've gone through a toast to God, a toast to the past, past um, and the now it's uh, dead for the, yeah. 
and now it's for the future for the generation. For future generation. And so let's bring to every kid on, uh, in the world. A seemingly endless procession of toasts roll off the tongue of the toastmaster, or tamara. Each toast necessitates the emptying of a full wine glass, so you can see where this is headed. It's a special toast. It's a ala verdi. So Tamaza chose the person who to drink. Uh, to our Georgian hosts. Uh, we thank you very, very much for your generosity. I'm scared, I don't want to drink this. <laughs> so much. Go back to the college days. I can't. I never learned to chug. Thank you for your hospitality. It's good. It's good. It's just a lot of it. What did you study at university? <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> now we're getting into the swing of things. You know, I, I did a degree in journalism and an undergraduate major in chugging. <laughs> I'll learn how to chug. Oh, this is no, the no. second cucumber, cucumber I've ever seen got today. in one day. <laughs> Why do strange men keep giving you cucumber, you know? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, there's, there's a story in here. Absolutely. Absolutely. The toasting is amazing. I've I made like this firm commitment to from now on introduce 10 minutes of toasting a week. And if everybody goes around the table and does that, I think we'd live in a much better world. Can we stop somewhere? Yeah. Oh, yeah.